Okay, now I'm going to show you how to post process the photographs of your artwork using Lightroom. If you're using a different software, such as Affinity Photo, you should be able to do the same things, but just in a slightly different way. But to keep this video simple, I'm just going to assume that you're using Lightroom. Also, this isn't a full Lightroom tutorial. This video is long enough already, and there are plenty of those already on YouTube, so I'll leave some links below. If you're completely new to Lightroom, I recommend that you learn your way around the software a bit first, as this will make things easier for you. Also, like all of this video, really, this is just what I do. It's not the definitive word on the matter. If there's anything that you think I'm missing, please drop a comment below. So, upload your photos onto your computer, save them to whichever folder you want them to live in, and open Lightroom. Click Import. Find your files in their folder, tick the boxes of all the images you want, then click Import again. While still in the library module, double click on one of the small image icons at the bottom and it will show the images big. Scroll through them and pick out the best ones that you want to edit, including the ones with the grey card or colour card. And for each one, click B to save them to the quick collection. Right click on an image, go to collection, quick collection. Then go into the develop module and now you have all the images you want to edit in one place. Go to the image with the colour checker or grey card in it. Make sure the exposure is broadly correct. Now I can see here that I got in the way of the light a bit, so it's slightly underexposed. Don't do this. I'll bump it up using the histogram for reference. Adjust the white balance by clicking on the eyedropper, then either onto the middle grey of your colour card or onto your grey card. Scroll down and open Lens Corrections and click on Enable Profile Corrections and Remove Chromatic Aberration. This will adjust for lens specific issues such as barrel distortion, which is when the image curves out slightly from the middle, vignetting, which is when the corners are darker than the centre, and chromatic aberration, which is where lens dispersion can cause coloured edges or fringing. If you use a colour card, crop the image down to the card, right click and export the image as a JPEG, then close Lightroom. Open your colour checker software and drag the JPEG in. Line up the squares, set the mode to colour metric, save to Lightroom and save calibration. Quit the software and reopen Lightroom. Uncrop the image and click on your preset once it becomes available on the left hand side. Now this print happens to be pretty much monochrome, so the changes here are very subtle, but they'll be much more evident with colourful work. If you didn't use a colour card, don't worry, it's not essential. You can do it by eye and we'll fine tune the colours later anyway. This just saves time by getting us closer to correct. In which case, if you're using Canon lenses, change the colour profile from Adobe Colour to Camera Neutral. It's much more accurate than Adobe Colour, which I find oversaturated and inaccurate out of the box. If not, just experiment with your lens profiles and find the one that's closest to your artwork. Next, staying on the same image, highlight all the thumbnails in the quick collection and click Sync. Check None, then tick the boxes Treatment and Profile, White Balance, Colour, Lens Corrections and Process Version, then Synchronise. All the changes you made will then be made to all the images in your quick collection. Decide which image you want to use for your main image, click on it and minimise the thumbnail bar. Now with the general settings done, we can now start editing in more depth. Click on the crop tool and crop and or rotate the image as necessary. Next we want to sort the exposure and tone. The exposure should be pretty much correct since we were monitoring it through the shoot, but if you need to make relatively big changes, use this first, then make more controlled adjustments using the tone sliders below. Looking at the histogram at the top, I can see that the black point needs adjusting, as it almost always does. 
So, keeping my eye on the histogram, I move the black slider down until it's just about to clip. If your image has areas of high contrast, like this one does here, it's usual for the light areas to be a bit washed out. You can resolve this by dropping down the highlights, then increasing the whites, again until it's just about to clip. You need to find the right balance between these two. Shadow is probably the least important adjustment. This is a question of fine tuning the darks and should be in balance with the black. Quite often I leave it as it is. Here I could maybe try dropping it a fraction to reinforce the darks in the more detailed areas. You can see the effect in the histogram. It's flattening off the lower end. Actually, I think minus 10 is too much. Minus five is better. So you do have to use your eye and your judgment for this and each image will be different, but use the histogram to help you. Learn to read it and it's a really useful guide. Now that I've corrected the tone, I can see that there's just a very slight shadow across the bottom. It's very subtle, but I'll correct it using the graduated filter tool. I just drag it up from the bottom, press O to see the area it's masking, then make the adjustment. Bumping the white up by 10 should do it. The graduated filter and adjustment brush tools are really useful if your photograph is inconsistently lit or has any localized artifacts. You can mask off areas and make localized adjustments to exposure, tone, color temperature, and sharpening using these toggles. Next, we need to fine tune the colors. Now this image, like most of my recent work, is monochrome. So I'm gonna open up a screen print from a few years ago to better demonstrate this, as I remember the colors needed a lot of correction. I've corrected the tone already, but you can see from the original print that the colors are way off. In this case, I didn't use a color checker card. I put the print right up next to the monitor so I can compare them directly to each other. I can see that the blue is too green, the violet is too blue, and the gold is too orange. First, just see how much changing the profile affects the colors by switching from Adobe Color to Canon's Camera Neutral. You see the difference that makes? It's much closer to being correct now. It's fixed the violet and yellow hues, but it's still not quite right. Next, I'll go down to the color section and fix that blue. It's still too green, so I'll shift the hue over towards the violet. Well, that's better, but it needs to be darker. Now I can't move the general shadows slider down without also darkening the violets as well, so I'll drop the luminance here instead, and that will only affect the blue. It still looks a bit oversaturated, so I'll drop that down a bit. And I'll do the opposite for the gold, which is really washed out. Make that a bit darker and it looks like we're there. Now this is a bit of an extreme example and I'm not sure why it was so off, but it shows you just how much control you have over your colors and how if you need to, you can accurately correct them against the original artwork. Okay, so going back to my original print, these colors don't need correcting. So the final thing to do is sharpening. First, go to the detail section on the right and go to sharpening masking. Zoom in on an area with a mix of detail and solid tone. Holding down the Alt key on a Mac or Control on a PC, move the masking slider to the right. This shows you exactly which parts of the image are being sharpened. By default, it sharpens the whole image, but we don't want this as it also increases noise. So move it over until it's only sharpening the edges. Next, I'll go to noise reduction and increase the luminance a bit to finish the job. Don't go too far over or it will look artificially smooth. I then go back to sharpening and increase the amount just a bit to increase the contrast in the edges, but not so much that it looks artificial. And that's it. Now there are several other sharpening tools that you can use, but it's easy to overdo. And I think this looks about right. You've got to draw the line somewhere. If I was getting this professionally printed at a print lab to have archival prints made, at this stage I would soft proof the image. This involves duplicating the file, temporarily applying the print lab or printer manufacturer's color profile and re-editing the image against the original to try to predict and correct for any color or tonal shifts caused by the printing process. Now I haven't actually printed any archival prints of my work from this camera yet. And to be honest, I'm not sure it's good enough. I think I'll save that for when I can afford to upgrade my camera. Eventually I wanna get a 30 megapixel Canon EOS R full frame. And when I do this, I will definitely make a video all about the Geeslay printing process. 
Anyway, for now, I just want to format this image for websites and Instagram. For this, I like to use Photoshop. So I right click and hit export, export. And personally, I like to save to the desktop, not in a folder, and file everything at the end, but that's just me. I format it to PSD, leave it as 16-bit Adobe RGB, we'll change that later anyway, likewise the image size, and click export. And go to your desktop and click on the file to open Photoshop. If you need to do any final touching up, like removing a hair or grit or something like that, now is the time. The Spot Healing Brush is definitely your best friend for this, as it makes it so easy. Likewise, if you want to include a watermark. First, I'll export the image from my website. Go to File, Export, Export As, or Alt-Command-Shift-W. Set the format to JPEG. I use Squarespace for my website, so I'll change the width to 1500 pixels and leave the height to whatever it automatically changes it to, which is what Squarespace recommends. As we're reducing the size, I set the resampling option to bicubic sharper, which is the best option for reducing, and make sure convert to sRGB is ticked. That's the color space the internet works in, so it needs to be converted. Then go to quality and move the slider down. Keep an eye on the file size on the left. This needs to be at around 500 kilobytes or less. If your file sizes are too big, your website will run very slowly. Click export, then name and save your file. When saving for the web, I put my name, underscore, then the name of the piece. When a file goes on the internet, it can easily be downloaded, so make sure your name is on it. Next, let's save a version for Instagram. Again, click Command Alt Shift W on a Mac to go to Export As. Again, format as a JPEG. Set the quality to maximum as Instagram will compress it anyway. This is a portrait size image, so change the height to 1350 pixels and let Photoshop work out the width. Click on Canvas Size and set the width to 1080 and it will automatically insert borders. 1080 is the maximum width for Instagram, so it should always be set to that. If the proportions of your landscape image is such that the width automatically adjusts to more than 1080, then do it the other way around. Change the width to 1080, let it automatically change the height, then set the canvas size to 1350 instead, so the borders will be at the top and the bottom. For landscape images, the smallest height is 608 pixels, but I never use this. I always make it 1080 by 1080 instead with borders at the top and bottom. This way your image is bigger in people's feed. Leave color space as sRGB and click export. Instagram images aren't downloadable, so I'll just call this the name of the piece underscore Instagram and upload it using Creator Studio. And just make sure to save the PSD to file as well, so that you can easily export other versions if you need them. Okay, well, that's it. There was a lot of information packed in there, so hopefully some of it was of use for you. If it was, please give me a like and a subscribe, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. And until next time, ciao.